Hello, this is Chuck from Perforce Support. Today I want to show you how to add LDAP authentication to your Helix server. First, let's review some important vocabulary. LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. AD or ADS, Active Directory or Active Directory Services. This is a proprietary Microsoft technology and database used to manage computers, resources, and other devices on a network. This supports the LDAP protocol. Helix LDAP authentication. LDAP authentication uses built-in Helix server support and tools. LDAP configuration. This is the configuration that defines an active directory configuration or other LDAP server to which the Perforce server can connect in order to authenticate users. LDAP configurables, a set of Helix server configurables that need to be configured to allow LDAP authentication. Things that you should consider before implementing uh, LDAP. You need to ask yourself the following questions. Uh, planning is always very important. Will you specify failover LDAP ADS servers? Are you going to have a failover strategy if your user cannot connect to the first LDAP server or ADS server that they attempt to connect to? Uh, in that case, if, if that should fail, should they fall through to a secondary server? Do you plan to use P4 LDAP sync to help manage your Helix users? If you're going to do this, you must use the search method. Uh, which LDAP authentication method will you use? SASL, simple, or search? What users need to be excluded from LDAP? When you configure LDAP, you can exclude certain users uh, from being required to authenticate with LDAP. This is important in case, for some reason, the LDAP server is not available. All users require strong passwords, which is security equals three. You can determine the security level on your server by typing P4 counter security. Perforce names must match Active Directory names exactly for uh, LDAP to work. Some password requirements are that your users cannot use spaces or pounds in their passwords. Here are the steps to set up LDAP on your server. One, you create one or multiple LDAP configurations using P4 LDAP, your LDAP config, which is any name that you want to give it. It should be something meaningful. Two, make sure the configurations work before placing into production. And you do this by using the P4 LDAP dash T flag with a username and your LDAP configuration. Set the required Helix server configurables. There are a certain number of uh, Helix configurables required for LDAP to work on your server. P4 configure set off.default.method equals LDAP tells the server that the server is using LDAP authentication. P4 configure set off.ldap.order.1 equal your LDAP configuration name tells the server the uh, LDAP server configuration to use to connect to the Active Directory or LDAP server. Four, make sure at least one super user uses Perforce authentication in case the LDAP server is unreachable. And this is very important. And you can tell the authentication method the user is using by checking the auth method field in the user's uh, user spec. Restart the Helix server. At this point, your server will be using LDAP authentication. At that point, you can convert all existing non-super users to use LDAP authentication by typing p4 admin set LDAP users. This will convert all non-super users uh, to use LDAP authentication. Here's a typical LDAP search configuration. Uh, the important thing to note in this configuration is one, the host, which is the host of the LDAP server, 
the port, which for normal LDAP is, is uh, typically 389. Uh, the type of encryption that the LDAP server is using, in this case, uh, it's none. Uh, the search filter is, is very important and should be limited in scope to uh, specify that uh, the Perforce users are a member of a specific uh, Perforce user group. And you can see by the example here that it's searching for uh, Sam account name uh, that's equi equivalent to the uh, user that's passed into it, who is a member also of in our case, perforce underscore users. A search bind uh, domain name is essentially the user who's going to be authorizing the uh, user uh, authentication search on the LDAP server. And typically, this name should be uh, normally a super user uh, on the LDAP server. The search password, uh, once the configuration is saved, will be encrypted and shown in the, uh, the spec by just a series of asterisks. Three fields that are very important are attribute, UID, and typically this will be the SAM account name, the attribute name, which normally is mapped to the display name, and the attribute email, which is the user principal name. In this case, uh, our ADS server uh, maps user principal name to the user's email address. Here are the essential LDAP server settings that are required for LDAP to work on your server. Off.default.method must be set to LDAP. Off.LDAP.order.1 uh, must be configured with a valid LDAP configuration profile on your Helix server. Uh, you must do a P4 admin restart after these two configurables are set. And then typically you would always do a P4 admin set LDAP users to make sure that all of your non super users are set to use LDAP authentication. If you plan to update your Perforce server user accounts uh, from the users uh, that are stored on your LDAP server, you must set off.ldap.user autocreate to 1. And at this point, you could run p4 LDAP sync u c with your LDAP configuration, which will pull over all LDAP users in your Perforce group on your ADS or LDAP server. Let me show you a live demo of how this works. For my demo, we're going to add LDAP support to this test server that I've set up. You notice actually I've done a P4 configure show. Uh, there's nothing set up here uh, to support uh, LDAP. The first thing that we want to do is to create an LDAP configuration. For brevity, I've actually pre-configured a configuration on my server uh, so we don't have to go through and, and do a, a bunch of typing. So I type P4 LDAP. My LDAP is the name of the configuration. The important part of the configuration <coughs> is that we will need to put in a host IP, a port number, which for standard LDAP is typically 389. Uh, in this case, we're not going to be using uh, encryption on our test LDAP server. Uh, and our bind method is going to be search. We define a, a base uh, search DN. And the important thing here is actually our search filter. I've set the search filter to match the SAM account name to the passed in username. And also I've put the additional requirement that that user be a member of a particular group. In our case, it's perforce underscore users. Because we're using the search method, I set a search bind DN to be a user uh, who has authorization to uh, perform uh, searches on behalf of other users on the uh, LDAP or ADS server, and also set a search password for that user. Uh, however, because uh, of the security concerns, uh, we always uh, encrypt and conceal the password once the configuration is saved. 
The important thing, too, to add to the configuration are these three fields at the bottom of the, uh, of the LDAP configuration. The attribute uh, user ID, which is defined as the, uh, the uh, SAM account name. The attribute name, which is the display name. And the attribute email, which is the user principal name in our case, uh, which is used to fill in the user fields on the Perforce server. I'm going to go ahead and close this. The next thing that we want to do is uh, test our configuration to make sure that it works for a, a user. Type P for LDAP space dash T, a username, and uh, the name of the LDAP configuration that we're testing. It's going to ask for a uh, password for our test user. I put the password in. And we see that our configuration is good and that the user, I am a user, was able to authenticate against the LDAP server successfully. The next thing we want to do is make sure that our counter, our security counter is set to the proper level. So to do that, I'm going to check it by typing uh, P4 counter security. We see that actually we have no security right now on our server. So I'm going to go ahead and remedy that by setting the security to 3. And we see that it's updated the configuration. Uh, security is set to 3 now. Uh, next, we need to set up those important uh, LDAP uh, uh, configurables on the server so the server actually knows uh, that it's using LDAP for authentication and that uh, uh, knows what, what the configuration is that it's using. So we're going to uh, set the auth.default.method equals to LDAP. And remember that none of these uh, configurables are going to take effect until we actually restart the server. The next configurable we're going to set is off.ldap.order.1 equals to the configuration that we've set up, which is in our case my LDAP. And if we have a if we want to have a fall through server, we would also uh, configure those as off.ldap.order equals dot two dot three and so forth. And the thing to remember is that if the uh, search algorithm goes to an LDAP server and it finds the username at all, like even if that user is disabled on a particular server, uh, it won't fall through to another uh, uh, configuration or another LDAP server, but it's simply going to fail that server. And that's actually an important gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the uh, server. And this will actually cause the settings to take uh, to take effect. Uh, I'm going to make sure that all my users uh, are actually set up for LDAP. Do the or type P4 admin set LDAP users. We see in this case no users were updated. If there were users uh, who were in the Perforce users group on the Active Directory or ADS server. Uh, it would have actually pulled over those users. Let's take a look at a couple user configurations. Uh, P4 user dash out, and then CFLAM is an example, which is my account. It'll show you that the auth method is set to perforce. And that's because I'm a super user on the server, and the uh, set out up users will not uh, uh, change the authentication method for. Uh, anybody who's in the super user group. If you want to be able to automatically update users on the Perforce server from the LDAP server, you need to set the auth.ldap.user auto create to one. Let's see if we have more users on the LDAP server, but we can update to our Helix Perforce server. I'm going to do a P4 users just to show you that right now we only have uh, two users. Uh, who are set up actually on the uh, the local test server. 
uh, CFLUM and that other user, I am, I'm a user. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to do a P4LDAP sync dash U dash C uh, my LDAP. And this is going to go out and try to find users who are in that uh, perforce underscore users group that we spoke of earlier. And uh, if they're not uh, set up on our local server, it, it will do so. We see that LDAP sync found two users on the ADS server that it did not have on the local Helix server, so it added them in. K Powder and uh, V Kansas have been added, and uh, it also picked up the email uh, from that field that we had mapped uh, between the Active Directory server and the uh, uh, the uh, Perforce server. So let's do a P4 user. Dash O on one of these users. Here's a new user that's been created on a Perforce server uh, with the, uh, the mapped email address. And uh, notice that the authentication method, auth method, has been set to uh, LDAP. So these users will now be able to authenticate against the Perforce server uh, using LDAP. I'd like to thank you for watching our video. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, you can find also additional valuable resources online at the following uh, links. Our community knowledge base is at community.perforce.com. And here you will find excellent articles on just about anything and everything Perforce. The go-to resource is the Perforce Systems Administrator's Guide. And here you'll find in-depth uh, detail on everything to know about uh, Perforce uh, server uh, configuration.